Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and, and Director, thank you, particularly for your uh, support of the Service Member Civil Relief Act. Um, I think Senator Brown's questioning is right on target. We, we, and you're right, it does contribute to the readiness. As someone who served for 12 years in the Army and had to deal with these issues as an executive officer, um, you have to be on the guard constantly against lenders who don't respect, except in their advertising and in the multiple flags they have on their property, but they don't respect the soldiers as much as they should. So thank you, and please keep it up. By the way, when I was on active duty, it was called the Soldiers and Sailors Civil Relief Act, but then with the end of the Civil War, they changed it. I'm joking. Yes. No. Sorry. I, I got it, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> a little levity. Uh, credit uh, rating bureaus sell so-called trigger leads, which are essentially a tip that a consumer is shopping for a mortgage. The trigger lead can generate hundreds of contacts, and some of them more confusing than helpful. Uh, and you have a responsibility for both the mortgage uh, lending process and also the credit reporting bureau. Is there... Anything you could do uh, to help clear up the situation under existing authority to protect consumers from misinformation and just a deluge of... Uh... So one of the things that a prospective homeowner will talk to a mortgage lender, and then all of a sudden, they'll start getting a barrage of calls, and they actually think that the original mortgage lender told everyone, and they wonder what's going on. This is something that I think our authority is somewhat limited, but I think we're happy to look at different solutions to make it clear that, you know, that, that is not happening because the mortgage lender is really telling everyone. It's because the credit reporting company is really making that information available. You know, you, you raise the issue of, of SCRA and data on credit reports. We have a lot more of these companies collecting sensitive information, not just what loan you apply for, your geolocation, mm -hmm. you know, where you go, and that data is increasingly being weaponized. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at all of these data issues and figuring out how to make sure we're protecting the public. Well, a, a simple approach might be to, and this would require our action, is to uh, give the uh, consumer the right to erase all the data or only hold it for a, period of a time. limited period of time or prevent the sale of data um, under, with some exceptions. But um, we have to think about that as more of these situations take place. Uh, buy now, pay later is becoming very popular. Uh, and uh, we are now seeing uh, that essentially the regulation is state-based. Uh, I think there really is a uh, area of responsibility that your bureau could assume in order to uh, make sure that this uh, buy now, pay later situation uh, does not, uh, you know, really hurt the consumer as it could. Any comments or thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I agree. We, we, we issued a report with a number of actions. We've started acting all that, including supervision of some of these firms. I've been checking day to day when it came to Black Friday, Cyber Monday, what is happening with the growth on buy now, pay later, and I hope to report more to you about that. The bottom line on this is there's a lot more buy now, pay later providers. We cannot have a race to the bottom. We have to have some basic standards for which they will not try and use regulatory arbitrage to cheat people. They too are also harvesting quite a bit of data, and we need to look, we're gonna be looking at that. So. Um, I want to make sure that whether you use a buy now, pay later loan or a credit card, that federal, you, you, you can have your federal protections and it's not arbitrage. And uh, I think what would be helpful to us, if you could generate uh, uh, some information about the uh, insidious use of this data that's collected, because I'm sure there's some very graphic examples. And what that would give us, I hope, the motivation to... Uh, gives you the authority to, to take appropriate steps. Well, I worry that actually state and non-state actors are going after this data. We saw with the Equifax 
data breach, that it ended up in indictments of members of you know, the Chinese army. So we have to look at this, not just as consumer, but really our data and our security. Thank you very much, Mr. Director. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Senator Reid. Senator 